In our strategy, we would be giving uh, back the protein. And so when you think about all of the different therapeutics that we have right now for, for helping with cholesterol or even heart disease in general, these are foreign, by and large, foreign proteins. In this particular strategy that we're developing, we're actually taking a protein that your body normally makes and giving, giving it back to you. So it's what would be called an endogenous protein and not a foreign protein where you should have a reaction or a toxicity or other side effect. And certainly from our experiments that we've done to date, we see no side effects. I think that there are opportunities to um, offer synergistic effects with this new therapy, HSP27 plus statins. Um, there also may be potential uh, combinations with PCSK9 inhibitors that are emerging from the market right now. But I, I think one of the things we're particularly interested in are the effects that are seen in women. And uh, one of the things that is not well recognized or discussed is that as women go through menopause, they of course lose ovarian function, but what happens to them is that their PCSK9 levels also increase. So uh, in, in a regular menopausal woman, which on average is at age 51, this may be particularly important. One other area though that we're looking at, uh, which is, is I think becoming more, more important, are what I would call the Angelina Jolie effect. And currently we're actually studying such patients where they would have a, a genetic tendency to developing cancer and because of that genetic tendency, in their 30s, these young women will have their ovaries removed. And with that loss of ovarian function, theoretically, they're losing a lot of protection against heart disease. And so you cannot give them back hormone replacement therapy. That would completely undo the surgery. But could you give them back, for example, this heat shock protein as a replacement and have targeted effects on hardening of the arteries, but no effects on, for example, their risk of developing a cancer? It's both. In fact, what we're doing uh, next month is we're working, I'm working together with a gynecologist and a genetics expert who will screen these patients, will see these young women in a clinic and say, you know, you're at risk for cancer, you've come here because you want to discuss the possibility of having surgery. By the way, one of the things that we're trying to explore right now is in the, f in the context of lo losing your ovaries, would you also be at risk for heart disease and can we follow you as part of a research study? So a simple thing we would be doing in addition to all the usual things like history and physical examination would be to measure their blood levels of estrogens and PCSK9 and HSP levels and follow them as they go through their elective surgery. So priorities of care for 51-year-old women, that's actually fairly s important, but relatively simple right now because as you go through menopause, uh, unfortunately, women are by and large not being prescribed hormone replacement therapy because of what would be called off-target effects, risk of cancer, risk of blood clots. So those women are actually kind of cut off cold apart from some lesser therapies like topical estrogens, etc. Um, and yet they may be uh, somewhat of a time bomb because their, their d uh, risk of developing hardening of the arteries has just suddenly gone up and it's just a matter of time before they catch up to men. So could HSP27 as a therapy or as a vaccine uh, be helpful for these women is what we really want to find out. What we have done so far is we've done experiments administering recombinant HSP27, which is the protein that we've made in, in bacteria, to both female mice and male mice. And it works in both, and it's protective in both. The benefits of recombinant HSP27 therapy or vaccination, I think, would be the same in men and women. And, um, uh, you know, I think where there might be a slight difference is women are already at a delayed part of the game with regards to hardening of the arteries until they reach menopause. So uh, it may be that uh, the strategies for treatment would be slightly different just because of the, they're, they're not synchronized in their biological clock.